If you're trying to build a bigger back, one that's wider, thicker, and more muscular, but you're training incorrectly, you're just gonna be putting a lot of time and effort into something that's not really gonna pay off. Most people are unaware that they're making mistakes when training their back, but just by fixing these nine very common mistakes, you'll be able to experience faster and more consistent and reliable progress without risking an injury and without wasting time. The very first mistake is one that's easy to spot using too much momentum on your back exercises. Most people think that this only happens with cable exercises like low rows or lat pull downs, but you can definitely use too much momentum with regular barbell rowing and pull up movements as well. Using a little momentum, especially by the end of a set is okay, but if you're using too much momentum, you'll be primarily using your lower back rather than your rhomboids and lats. Not only does this defeat the purpose of the exercise, but it can also easily set you up for a nasty lower back injury, especially since you'll probably only use momentum when you're lifting a really heavy weight that you're probably just not ready for yet. You're much better off using a lighter weight that you can control while performing the exercise. The same idea applies to doing partial reps where you're not extending your arms all the way out at the end of each rep. This is especially common with something like a pull-up. If you can't do the exercise right because there's too much resistance, then there's always a way to lighten the load so that you can perform the exercise properly. Another mistake that so many people make is they pull with their hands rather than pulling with their elbows, and they do this on their rowing, pull down, and pull up exercises. If you make this mistake, what ends up happening is instead of working the back muscles that you're trying to target, you wind up mostly just working your biceps instead. Even though the biceps will be involved in most of your compound back exercises, we want our back to remain the prime mover and only have the biceps assist the movement. One of the best ways to do that is to concentrate on pulling with the elbows. So for all of your bent over rowing movements, you'll want to think about pulling your elbows towards the ceiling. And for all of your pull down and pull up movements, you want to intentionally try to pull your elbows back behind you and down. Something that has helped me a lot is rather than taking a regular grip, I like to loop my thumbs around the bar, whether I'm doing pull ups, lat pull downs or rows. When I do it this way, it helps me use my hands more like hooks rather than gripping the bar really tight, and that helps me concentrate more on pulling with my elbows. Now you can try this, but understand that it's not required, and if you feel uncomfortable doing your back exercises with this kind of a grip, you could still focus on targeting your back perfectly fine with a regular grip. But another mistake that goes hand in hand with this one is not retracting your shoulder blades before beginning your back exercises. This is again something that will prevent your back from getting the results that you are after. Before beginning any back exercise, you'll wanna pull your shoulder blades back and together. You wanna to imagine that you're trying to hold a pencil in between your shoulder blades throughout the entire exercise. The problem is that most people spend the majority of their day hunched over either because they have a job that requires them to sit in front of a computer, at a desk, or behind a steering wheel, and maintaining that bad posture on a daily basis makes the rhomboids in the back overstretched and weak. So to counter this and to help activate the muscles that are responsible for retracting the shoulder blades, you can grab a resistance band from both ends, hold it straight out in front of you while maintaining a slight bend in your elbows, and then you would open up your arms like you're doing a reverse fly, but at the end of every contraction, you'll also wanna externally rotate your arms by turning your thumbs up. You'll wanna do this because when you're hunched over a lot, not only will your chest become tighter while your back becomes weaker, but your arms will begin to internally rotate as well. So you can do this exercise for a couple sets before beginning your back workouts to help activate those muscles. The next big mistake that's especially common for beginners to make is not maintaining the neutral lumbar curve when bent over rowing or deadlifting. This puts excess stress on the lower back and leaves you very susceptible to a lower back injury. It's also a very bad habit that you wanna fix because it'll carry over to how you lift other objects off the ground even when you're not in the gym. Now luckily some of the tips that we already discussed will help you avoid this. Just by pulling your shoulder blades back, it'll make it a lot harder to slouch so much while rowing or deadlifting. But another cue that can really help you is to focus on sticking your chest out. By focusing on maintaining a big chest, you'll be a lot less likely to allow your back to slouch forward while also getting a more effective back workout. Now it's important to mention that even with a big chest, if your form is off elsewhere, you'll still be more likely to round your lower back. For example, some beginners will try to keep their legs fully locked out while doing bent over rowing movements. And when you do it that way, once your hamstrings start getting too tight as you bend further and further down, 
your lower back will have to compensate by rounding for you to be able to get down any further. So make sure that you have a slight bend in your knees when performing rows as well. Another mistake is using supporting accessories such as belts, braces, and straps all the time. Now, unlike the other mistakes, this won't prevent you from building up your rhomboids, lats, and traps. But besides these external muscles, you also have to worry about deep tissue internal muscles, stabilizer muscles, as well as your grip strength. One deep tissue muscle that's very important to keep strong is the transverse abdominis. Its job is to pull your core muscles inward and to brace the core. And when you perform regular deadlifts as well as bent over rowing exercises, not only will you be strengthening your back, but you'll also be strengthening your deep tissue abdominal muscles like your transverse abdominis. However, if you only do these exercises with a belt, the belt will be doing all the work for your transverse abdominis since the belt will keep your core drawn in. So while you're building up strength and lifting more weight with your back, your transverse abdominis isn't getting stronger as well. Then one day, if you forget your belt, you'll be a lot more likely to get an injury since you haven't trained your muscles in a very functional way. This can also happen outside the gym if you have to lift something heavy off the ground and you don't have your belt on you. Same thing with straps. If you always use straps, you'll miss out on one of the major ways that you could use to improve your grip strength. If you're constantly wearing knee braces or elbow braces, you won't be improving the strength of the surrounding stabilizers, which will actually increase your chances of injury when the braces come off. Now, this doesn't mean that you can never use this equipment. On the contrary, belts and straps can make it possible to lift heavier and heavier loads that would be simply impossible to safely and effectively lift without them. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't also incorporate plenty of moderately heavy sets that lead up to your really heavy sets without using the supportive equipment for those moderately heavy sets. You can also do full workouts where you don't use any supportive equipment whatsoever to help keep your stabilizer muscles strong. Let's move on to another mistake that you'll usually see on lat pull downs. When you perform a lat pull down, you wanna to try to bring the bar under your chin, but no lower than your upper chest. Once you get that low, going any lower will no longer be working your lats. Instead, you'll probably be using relatively weak rotator cuff muscles that are responsible for internally rotating your arms. Obviously, this can lead to an injury, but it will also prevent you from using heavier weight since you won't be able to get that low without going lighter. Trying to go that low will also limit lat activation because it'll cause you to pull your elbows forward in front of you rather than keeping them out to your sides. To prevent this from happening, try pulling your elbows back behind you and don't go lower than your upper chest when performing lat pull downs. Next, we have the general mistake of not switching up your exercises and not incorporating any variety. Of course, it's true that exercises like deadlifts, barbell rows, and pull-ups are some of the best that you can do to build your back up, but you should also incorporate other exercises that allow you to target your back from unique angles and in different ways. Exercises like face pulls, unilateral cable pull downs, and long angle dumbbell rows can all be very effective at targeting the back in a different way. Repeating the same exercises over and over again will eventually lead your body to adapting to them and you hitting a plateau. A great way to prevent this from happening or to break a plateau if you're stuck at one right now is to switch up your exercises every four to six weeks. Even switching from a regular barbell row with a pronated hand position to a reverse barbell row with a supinated hand position can help you target your muscles in a different way. Also, if you repeat the same exercises over and over again, there is a very real issue that you can run into known as pattern overload, which will increase your risk of developing an overuse injury. So make sure you're switching it up. Another mistake along the same lines is not incorporating any unilateral exercises. Again, it's easy to stick to things like deadlifts, barbell rows, and pull-ups since they're such effective compound exercises for your back. But every workout should also have some unilateral work that isolates one side at a time. This is because if you're always performing exercises with two arms, one side can get stronger than the other and can start compensating, making that other side even weaker. This can lead to disproportionate muscle mass on your back and on your arms. One of my favorite unilateral exercises is the long angle dumbbell row, which is performed just like a regular dumbbell row, except you keep your arm opened up at a wider angle, aiming to bring the dumbbell back towards your hips. This will help you target the back of your shoulder in a way that's gonna be very difficult to do with a regular barbell. Suitcase rows and regular dumbbell rows are great too, as well as unilateral cable exercises. All of these will prevent you from having one dominant side over the other. 
The last and the final mistake I want to go over is doing too much or too little isolation work. If your workouts are made up of mostly isolation exercises instead of the major compound exercises that we've been talking about, you're going to have a really difficult time adding thickness to your back. You'll also find it a lot harder to progressively overload your back exercises since isolation work will require you to usually use a lot less weight. With that said, if you're not doing any isolation exercises, you're going to have a lot of trouble with lagging muscle groups that aren't keeping up with other muscles that might have grown faster. For example, a lot of people have lagging lats and pull-ups are great to help you build up those lats, but if they're still not growing, incorporating exercises like straight bar pull-downs and pull-overs can really help your lats catch up to the rest of your back. If you're having trouble with the back of your shoulder, let's say, or it's just not proportional to the front and the side of your shoulder, doing isolation work with exercises like reverse flies can really help as well. Even though everyone is different and some people will need to work isolation more than others, you want about 80% of your workout to be focused on the major compound lifts like the rows, pull-ups, and deadlifts, and about 20% of your workout to be focused on the exercises that isolate parts of your back. So those are the nine major mistakes that I see a lot of people making with their back workouts. I really hope this video has helped you out. If it has, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I release new, future tips and tricks just like the ones that you found in this video. Also, as always, I wanna remind you that building muscle isn't just about your training, it's also about what you're doing in the kitchen. So if you wanna take the next step and you wanna get a scientifically proven solution for building the maximum amount of muscle in the next 12 weeks without all the fat gain that is typically associated with other bulking programs, then head on over to my website and check out my lean bulking program. Not only will this program lay out exactly what you should be eating for the next 12 weeks as your metabolism adapts and changes, but it also teaches you advanced training concepts like undulating periodization, reverse pyramid training, and much, much more to help you break through plateaus, get stronger, and build more muscle. As with our other programs, there will be a full video exercise library and there'll be a coach to help guide you through the whole program and answer any questions you have. To find out more, you can click the link in the description below, or if you want more personalized one-on-one -on -one help, you could visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.